Hello and welcome to the Happy Valley High School Art YouTube channel. Today's drawing is going to be a two-point perspective castle scene. Our castle or fort is going to have brick or stone exterior with a gatehouse, at least two towers, battlements throughout the exterior of the castle or fort walls, windows at least two, portcullis may be opened or closed, drawbridge needs to be a wooden bridge with chains drawn open, a moat surrounding the castle, and then your own background. Add some details. You can put flags on the castle, a forest, dragon, a knight, animals. Have fun with this drawing. Lots of terminology to learn about castles today. You'll be learning about what a portcullis is and battlements are. These are things you've probably seen on a castle but just didn't know the lingo. So the first thing that you are going to do with your drawing is put the horizon line and draw a nice horizon line across the middle part of your paper. Line that up so you can see correctly. Let me zoom this out just a hint. There we go. For two point perspective, you're going to have two vanishing points. Put them on the exterior or outer parts of your horizon line. You can use the corners of your page if you'd like to, right where those, those, that line meets. I like to put them on here. It's just nice to have on your paper. For our castle or fort wall, we're going to start off with the front part of our castle. It's just a box in perspective. Make this a little bit smaller. We're going to be putting in some details, so we don't want the largest castle out there. So don't make that line too big for your castle. Right hand side of this line is going to use your right hand vanishing point. Left hand side of this line is going to use your left hand vanishing point. So let's make those walls. Now on the right hand side, make this a little bit longer than you will on the other side. Going closer to that right hand vanishing point. And connect those down with a vertical line. Now, I didn't say this in the beginning, but always you should be working with perspective in a sharp pencil. That's why I prefer a mechanical pencil. It always stays sharp. I don't have to worry about it. A sharp pencil is your best friend. That and an eraser. And, of course, the ruler. Three essentials to a perspective drawing. So right now it kind of looks like a coffin. We're going to want to get rid of that horizon line that is running through our, our fort walls, our castle. Okay. So we're going to work on creating our, our uh, gatehouse. So you can have one that pops out of your walls or you can have one that's sunken in. For today, we're going to have it kind of pop out. So I'm going to line up with the left hand vanishing point and extend my lines from the bottom of that, that castle wall, from the bottom of our fort. On one side, I'm going to pivot my ruler. Remember, it needs to stay on that vanishing point. So always check. If you'd noticed, mine was a little bit off. So always check. Make sure it's nice and on that vanishing point, and then extend another line. This is going to be where our gatehouse is. Honestly, this is the bottom of a two-point perspective box. We're just creating the bottom portion of it. So now I'm going to connect those by using that right-hand vanishing point. So right now, it's the bottom of our gatehouse. So this right here would be one of our vertical lines. I always tell you that's the first part 
of a two-point perspective drawing you should start with. I just thought it would be easier for us to draw the bottom for this particular um, part of our castle. So we're going to draw that vertical line up. We don't want to go too far. We, you know, our gatehouse could actually extend above. At least for mine, I don't want it to because I'm going to be placing a window above this later on in the drawing. So let's draw that other side of the other vertical line. Make sure that ruler is nice and straight. Extend that line up. So here's the top or the, the back side of this wall. And now connect those with a receding line towards that left hand vanishing point. I'm going to clean up a little bit here. So I'm going to get rid of the bottom of that castle wall that's now overlapped by this wall. And just a hairline off down here. I'm going to fix that. It's just bothering me. I think it might be my ruler more than anything. It's not really fixing. Okay. Now, we're going to draw the other side of this gatehouse. The gatehouse is where you'd have to enter first. So it's a little bit extended or sometimes indented in on the castle. In the past, I've done an indention, but I just find it to be a little bit more difficult for today. So I'm going to do an extended line. And then we're going to create the front part of this gatehouse. So we have to use that right hand vanishing point. We've just taken kind of the backwards way of making another box, another box in perspective. So I'm going to clean this up. Clean up that stuff that we don't need anymore. Fix up some things. So there is our gatehouse. So again, the gatehouse is just where the entrance of the castle or fort is. And if you'd like to have an additional part to your castle, you can. Uh, I'm, for this one, I think this is how I'm going to have mine. But if you wanted to have an extended side, you could make another vertical line. Uh, Left-hand side goes towards the left-hand vanishing point. Right-hand side of that line would go towards the right hand vanishing point. So now we're going to add in our uh, portcullis, and that is really the gate, uh, the entrance parts, so the gate, the iron gate that's either your portcullis can be opened or closed. I like an open portcullis, so that's what I will be doing for this. So we're going to make the front part of our gate. Because we are working on this side of uh, our box, we're going to use the right hand vanishing point. So simply, it's just like a door, making a door. We're going to make a vertical line up for the height of our door. Maybe make it a little bit taller. Top of that's going to go towards that right hand vanishing point. And then back down. So here is our portcullis. And you can make this opened or closed. So we're going to add in that iron gate to this. And again, I said I like to keep mine open. So what you would do is inside this space, create vertical lines for your iron gate. And again, I said mine will be open. And I kind of want to keep them evenly spaced. I'm not really worried about them being all the same length because I can go back in and erase what I, what I want to. And then I'm going to make my horizontals. And because I'm working on the right-hand side, I must use that right-hand vanishing point. Now you can make this iron gate as, as, um, you know, as detailed as you like. Sometimes people will put, especially if it's open, They'll put little arrows at the bottom of the gate. I like to do that. So I'm going to clean up these lines because they're a little bit long. And this is my open gate. If you'd like to close it, you would just have extended these all the way down. I'm going to add just a tiny little feature to this. Kind of make it look like... 
It has arrows. So I'm just making little tiny arrows at the top. Gives it a little bit of a, of a feature. Now we can see inside of those walls. So right here, we're going to use that left hand vanishing point to draw on the ground. And we're going to go back towards that left hand vanishing point. So that shows the interior part of our castle. And I, I like to shade, shade down here just to show a little bit of value in there. Just a hint. So there is our porticullis. Now, let's work on our drawbridge. So because we are drawing on the ground, we're going to use that left-hand vanishing point. We're on the right-hand side, but because we want to draw on the ground, we're going to use that opposite vanishing point. So from that left-hand vanishing point, line it up with the bottom of your porticullis, your gatehouse, the entrance and you're going to extend that line up. Now you want to make sure that this drawbridge, if drawn, would be larger than your porticullis, larger than that opening. If not, people are going to get into your fort or your castle. So you want to make sure, and then some castles, that the uh, drawbridge is actually would go over top the porticullis. So it can be larger than that opening. So I've extended the line down there, now to the other side, making sure that my ruler is still on my left hand vanishing point. Extend my line out. Then close it off using the right hand vanishing point. In the past, I've always drawn the castle much larger. I think though, to, to get the whole scenery in here, it's best that we draw our castle just a tiny bit smaller. So your drawbridge needs to be wood and it can be done with horizontal slats or vertical slats. Um, I prefer vertical, so that's what I'm going to do. So my example is going to be vertical, so I'm gonna be showing you how to draw that using the left hand vanishing point. However, if you wanted it to be horizontal slats, you would use that right hand vanishing point. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Should have done that a while ago. So I am zoomed in. Just know I am using the left hand vanishing point. And I'm going to line up my ruler with the left hand vanishing point, bring my ruler in just a little bit into my uh, drawbridge and then draw my wooden slats. Just a few. Not that many, I've got three on mine. To make it look like wood, all you're going to do is add a few little squiggly lines here and there. Use a little bit more pressure with your pencil. Make them overlap each other, make, make them, some of them longer, some of them shorter. You can darken that line. A little bit more shading on this than in our drawings past. Adding a little bit more pressure with my pencil to really kind of give us different values on our drawing. And you can shade that all in if you'd like to. Just give it a nice light shade. I'm going to kind of leave mine barren. Now we want there to be a chain drawn and it needs to be open. And what I meant by open is that we cannot have this drawbridge uh, closing on our polar colors. I want to be able to, to see that entrance. So we're going to make a drawn chain. All you are doing is creating a, a line from this point to this point and from this point to this point. So you just use your ruler and connect those corners and I draw my line lightly because I like to go back and add figure eights or, or um, small ovals to make it kind of look like a chain. So what I just do is I go over top of this making 
small circles or oval shapes, very small, and it just gives it, instead of having such a clean line there, it gives it that chained look. Can you see the difference? So again, I'm just making little like figure eights or circles, and they're not in a row, they're kind of going back and forth, just a, just a hair, and it gives it that texture and that look of a chain. So now we have our drawn bridge, we have our portcullis, we've got our, our uh, gatehouse. Let's work on the battlements. So battlements are at, at the, well actually wait, let's whoop, throw it back. Let's put some towers on here before we add those battlements because our towers will need those as well. Uh, so you need to have a minimum of two towers and we can place them back here in the, the back part of our castle. Now you can also make a very large tower. All you are doing is creating that vertical line, left hand side to the left hand vanishing point, right hand side to the right hand vanishing point. You will not have to do the bottom of that because our fort, our castle is in the way. You will not have to show that. So if you want a, a very tall um, tower, you can, can do that as you please. I'm going to add a tower back here in, in the distance. I'd like a little bit larger tower. So because my castle is kind of small, I don't want it to be too big. I'm just going to add my vertical line. And you can put this wherever you want on that castle, left hand side left hand vanishing point. It's not going to be very big. Back down towards that castle wall. Right hand side, right hand vanishing point. Back down towards the castle wall. You have to have a minimum of two towers. Just like putting buildings on. I want mine to kind of be symmetrical. So I want mine to be at the same height. So I'm going to make my top um, receding line. Doing my box a little bit different just because I want them to be on the same level. What I mean by that is they are in the same height, they're on the same height, because they are using the same receding line. Again, I know you can't see this, but I am using my vanishing points. Always know that I'm using the vanishing points. Maybe I should zoom out so you can see them. There we go. Okay. So what I mean is that both of these towers are using that right-hand vanishing point. They're connected to that. So they're, the front part of theirs is facing that right-hand side, so they're both using the same one. You can have more than that on your castle. I think I'm, I'm satisfied with that. So let's work on our battlements. And those will be on the exterior parts of the castle, even on your towers, unless you decide to do a tall Rapunzel tower. And actually, I'll do that right here in the middle so I can show you the differences. So I really want that Rapunzel tower to be quite tall, much taller than the others. Right hand side, right hand vanishing point, much, much, much smaller because it's even further back. Left hand side, left hand vanishing point. And back down. Okay. So if you want to do a Rapunzel tower, this will be just like when we did our houses, where if you want a big old, old, old uh, steep roof, uh, we're going to have to find the center of the part of the square that we have, or the part of the rectangle that we have. So remember, you line up with the top right hand um, point, and the furthest bottom left hand point, and you make a very light line. 
and you're going to make an X. X marks the spot. That's the center of this side. Make sure you line those up. This is very steep on mine. And I'm just where they meet. That's, that's the center of this side. Let me zoom in real quick. So where these two lines meet, that's the center of that side. So now I'm going to line up my ruler with that X marks the spot. I'm going to make a little dot where I want the top of my roof. I want this to be very dramatic, so I'm making mine quite high. Left hand side of that dot back down towards the left hand side of the building right hand side of that dot back down towards the right hand side of the building. You have to do this in order to make it look correct. Now you can have that, that spot. I want mine erased so it looks like it's all one part. I just think it looks a little bit more dramatic. And to make that roof, pitch that roof, you're going to use that right hand vanishing point. Know that I'm using that. I've just zoomed in so you can see. Just know that I'm using the right hand vanishing point and I'm going to draw towards it. Then to draw the other part of or the back part of our roof, we're going to use that same angle, lining my ruler up with the same angle, sliding over and connecting, getting rid of what I don't need. Ta-da! So now we have a Rapunzel tower. So you can have these on your towers, that's fine. So if you add two towers and you want them to both be what I call Rapunzel towers, you are more than welcome to do that. But let's work on our battlements. So again, the battlements are on the exterior part. They're kind of the little walls that go down so that would help um, protect and, and give you a place to shoot arrows through or cannons, etc through your, your fort or through your castle. So we will have that on the exterior parts of our walls all throughout. You do not have to have it on the um, gatehouse, which is this, this outer part. You can. Uh, it is not required. I am going to have mine. So what I'm going to do is line up with that right hand vanishing point and I'm going to make a receding line up here on the top the right hand side I'm working on the right hand side this is where my my um, battlements are going to go I'm going to extend this line around the other side so in order to do that I have to use my left hand vanishing point so line up that left hand vanishing point with the previous line you just made so there's my line right there left hand vanishing point. It's kind of like when we did the siding on our house. There is where I'm going to be working. Do this for all areas that you are going to be creating your battlements. Again, I'm going to be doing that on the front of my gatehouse. So I'm going to make an area for my battlements. Right hand side uses the right hand vanishing point. Left hand side, left hand vanishing point and I'm going to also have it on my towers. And I've, this tower wall is bothering me. It's a little bit in. I need to fix that. Just erase it. Much better. Okay, so right hand side. And why I like lining both of those towers up together is because when I put this on here, I don't have to move my ruler twice. I'm going to get this all nice. I don't want my battlements to be really big because we're further back in space on here. Got really thin battlements. Left hand side uses that left hand vanishing point. Lining up our previous line with the left hand vanishing point, drawing it around. So right here, I've got some really, really small details to add on here. Okay, <clears throat> to do the battlements, 
all you're doing is in between these two receding lines, you're going to create a little vertical line. Every other one you'll erase. So in between this space here, I'm going to zoom in. In between the space, I'm going to erase that top line, just the top line. Every time I draw the next one, I will erase every other one. Now for this one, I just extended that line. It makes it easier on me. I don't have to do another step. So I just kind of extended where that, that castle wall is. And I'm going to do that over here, too. I have to erase that second one. I like to work my way inwards. Just, just as personal preference doesn't mean that you have to do that. You'll notice, though, that that's what I'm doing. I believe you want an odd number. We'll check and see when I get done. What I mean by odd number is just an odd number of... So I'll erase this one. Odd number of verticals, I believe. So yeah, I think you do. Not the smartest decision on my behalf. There we go. Uh-oh, there goes in my part of my castle. Okay, so because I can see in between here, I'm just going to extend that line down. So right now they look a little flat. We are on the right-hand side of our castle. So all of these I've already got the right hand side of them drawn. We now have to draw the left hand side. This is a box in two point perspective. So right now, these are all the right hand side of our box. We now have to draw the left hand side. So we're gonna line up these parts with the left hand vanishing point. I'm zoomed in, just know right now I'm using my left hand vanishing point. This one we're not gonna mess with because its left hand side is over here. So this one, to draw that left hand side, I'm gonna line that up. This right here, this is our angle, the first part of our two point perspective that we draw. So I'm gonna line that up with the left hand vanishing point, go back towards it. I don't want mine to be really dramatic, so I'm not gonna go all the way, but I'm just gonna go back towards it and then a vertical line down gives it that three-dimensional look to it. Next one, here's that angle. Left-hand side of that line goes back towards it, left-hand vanishing point, back down. Again, I don't want mine to be really dramatic, so they're not gonna be really big. Now I'm just gonna use that line already there. Here's my angle, left hand side goes back towards the left hand vanishing point and back down. Left hand side, left hand vanishing point and back down. Here's my line, left hand side, left hand vanishing point and back down. So there are the battlements for the right hand side of my castle. I'm going to repeat that process on the rest of these, but first I'm going to show you and the biggest part. So let's do the left hand side. There's our left hand vanishing point. So let me see. One. I think we need to have an odd number. Remember I like to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Here's my one. 
I'm going to just extend this line down. I like, like using those lines that are already there. It makes it easier on you. Erase the second one, the top part of the second one. Using that previous line I'll be drawn. Just a little bit less that you don't have to erase. There's so much erasing when you're working with perspective. That's why it's always good to have a good eraser and then because you're working with a lot of small details, you kind of want to have, so I've got a really big one right there. Ah, I'm going to make this line just a little bit bigger so it's not so awkward and gigantic. There we go. A little bit bigger space. I totally did that wrong. <laughs> Let me go back in here. I messed up. This would have been the one I would have erased. Okay. Get it together, Miss Sess, as it is fall break. There we go. Little bump. Okay, so erase this one. Keep this one. Erase this one. Okay. She's fixed. So we now are working on the left-hand side of our castle. So the left-hand side of these battlements have been created. We now need to use the right-hand side. I'm zoomed in, just know I am using that right hand vanishing point. And here are the angles, not this one, right here, 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 here. These are the angles now of our boxes and we're gonna use that right hand vanishing point. And back down, That's really small. When I'm working up up on the top part, it's going to be so far away. I can, you know, just kind of thicken this part of it. We're getting closer to the viewer. Those battlements can be a little bit bigger. And again, I already told you guys on this one, we've already got it drawn because it's both the left and right hand side. Okay. So I'm just going to work on my, my uh, gatehouse. You want to have an odd number inside there. Every other one is erased. Maybe I'm wrong. I guess you wanted an even number. I'm telling y'all, it is fall break and I'm just not with it. Okay, so you want to have an even number. It's been a minute since I've had to draw the castle. No excuses. Two, three, four. Five, six. There we go. I need to add one more in here. Make that a little bit smaller. Okay. Every other one. This is a really fun drawing to do. I really enjoy the castle. A lot of my kids, a lot of my students really enjoy this. So whenever we do the actual project, if you are really involved in this castle, put a lot of effort into this. And you can use this, or you could do a, your own castle, a different version for the project. So left-hand side right now, I'm using that right hand vanishing point. 
because I'm working on the left hand side. I'm now going to swap over so I'm on the right hand side of the box so if I want to draw this I'm going to use that left hand vanishing point to make these. I'm drawing them back down. I like this drawing and I also like the city drawing. They're my favorites. Okay. And I'm going to quickly add those the number, eight numbers. Is not even in the best. And for this, because it's so far away, I'm just going to use my pencil, draw towards it. It'll still look. A little bit 3D. It's so far away that you don't really need to have all those and details here even numbers I'm gonna erase those top lines then kind of draw them back in So we have our four dark castle walls. We have the towers, a minimum of two towers. You have your battlements throughout the exterior part of the castle. Remember, it does not have to be on the gatehouse. We have our porticullis. It can be opened or closed. You will need to show the interior part of your castle. We have a drawn bridge that must be opened with chains drawn open. And now let's add some, some windows to our castle. So for my castle, we don't want really big windows and you don't want to have windows down here. Think about this, this is trying to be protective. How protective can you be when there are windows down at the bottom? So we're gonna put some windows up here. And I just like to make very elongated um, rectangular windows. So I'm going to place one over top of my uh, gatehouse and I kind of want it in between these spaces. So I'm going to just kind of give myself some very light guidelines so I know I want my window to kind of stay in between that space. And I'm on this right hand side. So I'm going to use that right hand vanishing point, kind of extend my horizontal for the bottom part of my window. And I just want a small window. This is for some nights, or if you've ever watched the movie. Um, Monty Python Knickets. There it is. And I actually just kind of centered it off of those two battlements. So I'm going to get rid of any extra stuff I don't need. Draw lightly, you guys. And we're going to do something interesting with our, our uh, window. You don't have to do this. I'm just going to show you all something. So I'm using my left hand vanishing point. And I'm going to draw inside, so I'm lining it up with this corner, using the left hand vanishing point, just drawing in just a little. I'm going to draw from that back down. And making this look three dimensional. And from where this is, towards that right hand vanishing point to the bottom of that line. Very, very small. I'm working very small. That's why this is so good to have a really sharp pencil because I could not have gotten in that little space if I had, if my pencil had been dull. And I'm gonna fill that in and it just makes it look 
three-dimensional. I think that's super cool. So we've got one window there. You can do more of these on here. You can do however many you want. You can put windows in your towers. I just like to put these little horizontal windows. I'm going to put a small one up here on this fort. I'm sorry, on this uh, tower. Very, very small, super, super small. And I want it to be at the same height on the other ones. Remember, I'm using those receding lines. The same receding lines, making sure it's on that right hand vanishing point. There we go. And I'm just up here, up here in the sky, which you cannot see what I'm doing, necessitas zoom out sometimes so i'm going to just thicken those lines just the same as this one because we're working on the same side of the box so all i'm going to do is thicken those a little bit to give it that 3d look same up here just a tiny little bit of a thicker line okay i'm going to add a few down here on the left hand side and I'm going to repeat that on my towers too. So I want them to be on the same level. So the bottom of this window, lining up with the left hand vanishing point. I'm currently using that left hand vanishing point. And I'm going to draw inside this space. Vanishing point, vanishing point, vanishing point. It's your best friend. Drawing back down. Now, I'm working on the left-hand side, so if I want to make that 3D look, I'm going to be opposite. So here, up here. Okay. And I'm going to do that over here in that little tiny one, and you're just going to see a small hair of it, if, if anything, just that top part. Very, very small. because the battlement is in the way. That actually looks lower than the other one. I don't like that. This ruler. Sometimes I have to switch the ruler. I'm gonna have to hand draw this because I don't like that. Okay, so I'm going to add some more of those little windows over here on the left-hand side of my castle. Using that left hand vanishing point, connecting down with verticals, connecting those receding lines with verticals. To draw the interior part, I'm going to use that right hand vanishing point because I'm on the left hand side. So right hand vanishing point of that corner back towards the ground. Left right hand vanishing point of this corner back towards the ground, back towards the bottom. And then the top part using the left hand vanishing point with your line that you just created. And shade those in. You can put windows up here. I'm going to teach you how to do a special window. So start off with a square. You want to put a little window up here in the, up at the top of the, the tower. I call this the Rapunzel Tower. Start off with a square, but I'm going to teach you how to make a more. So you can have just that square up there if you want to. Or 
you can make it more of a pointed window, which I kind of like. So we start off with the square, and all we're going to do is put a little triangle inside that space. And just get rid of what we don't want. I want another one over here, so I'm going to use the right hand vanishing point right now to do on the right hand side, put my little window, top of my window. I want them on the same level. Connect those down. And then I want that same style window. Make it a little triangle. And get rid of my extra stuff. I just don't like the way this is looking. I think because my square was up a little bit higher. Here we go. Okay. So we have our windows. Now, I did say on the castle that you needed to have a brick exterior or stone exterior. So now that we've got the castle pretty much drawn out, we're going to work on our brick or our stone just like the house when we did siding. If you're working on the right-hand side of your house or right-hand side of your castle, you're going to use that right-hand vanishing point, left-hand side, left-hand vanishing point. If you choose to do stone, it has a really cool payoff, but it takes a while. It is very tedious. So what you're going to be creating, though, are these receding lines. Draw lightly. Also, make them bigger. Don't make them too thin on yourself. So I'm going to make these a little bit larger. So I'm using that right-hand vanishing point, And I'm going to draw real lightly. I'm going to make these receding lines. You can barely see them on my page. Now look, we have a gatehouse that's popping out. Skip over your gatehouse. Skip around that whole thing. These are much bigger. If you're, especially if you're doing stone, I suggest you make them much bigger. It will save you a lot of time. So I'm going to show you how to do stone. I'm not going to spend this entire video doing stone because this video will be three times as long if I sat here and drew the whole thing. I'll get you started and then you guys can can figure out the rest. So here we go, skipping over. To do this part of our gatehouse, it's the same thing. But I like to, to continue it over here with this first. So this is the left-hand side of our castle. Here are those previous lines. We want that to wrap around. Now we're going to use the left-hand vanishing point just to work on this area. I won't be doing this top mark because this line would be go over where my battlements were. So here is this line. I'm working with that left hand vanishing point. Still got it lined up with my left hand vanishing point. Remember to make sure that it's still on the vanishing point. It likes to move itself. Now to work on the right hand side, use that line that you use for the left hand side, line it up with the right hand side. Taking your time. Perspective is all about taking your time, drawing lightly, using you know a sharpened pencil. I'm sure you guys are tired of me saying that. Inside that wall, you could shade this a little bit lighter so you don't have to, I mean a little bit darker, but you can shade that part in that wall so you don't have to extend that line around. However, if you want to work inside the space and you wanted to extend that line, I'm going to darken my gate so I can show you guys what I'm talking about. Give me one second. I'm also thickening it. It makes it look a little bit better. So if we're going to draw the, the stone inside this space, this is the inside part of our wall. So we're going to use that left hand vanishing point and lining it up with the previous. These are just our little guidelines for our brick or for our stone. If you are doing the stone, do the bigger, 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 bigger spaces. Brick. 
is easy. Also, on I wanted to say this, on the towers, you do not have to do the stone. They can just be as is. Brick or stone, you don't have to do those on the towers. We can leave them the way they are. You can do them if you want to. You totally do them if you want to, but I think we'll just pretend that they're stucco, which totally didn't exist during the era of castles and forts, but to save on time, this is just practice. You don't have to do that. Okay, so we've got our little guidelines for our brick or for our stone. If you're doing the brick, you're now going to line up your ruler vertically in between those spaces and draw, skip, draw, skip, draw, skip. Move the ruler down, skip, draw, skip, draw, skip, draw. We've done this before. I'm not going to, to show you how to do brick. For stone, I'm going to zoom in. These are our guidelines. This is where we want to keep our stones within this place. But our stones, we don't want them to look the same. They change shape, they change sizes, etc. Uh, so in these spaces, you're going to draw random curvilinear type shapes in that space. Random. You'll notice that they get a little bit, and I'm thickening my lines, very thick outlines around this, and you just want to create different shapes. You don't want them to be about the same. These sizes, though, are going to get smaller as they get away from you. So in between these spaces, to kind of color that in, like it's got a nice dark random, they're just rocks. And you want to switch all directions. And you'll do this in between those spaces. So you really want to take your time, and, but you know, it, it does have a really cool payoff. Now what I'd like to do on my drawing is I'd like to add some flags on, on the front part of my castle. And I kind of wanted to put them right here exactly where I put my, um, my stone to show you. So I'm a little questioning myself right now what I should do. I guess what I'll do is I'll put, put my flag that I wanted to put on the wall over here. I really wanted to have my flags on the front, but oh well. Okay, so in between here, I'm going to put some flags because I just like the way they look. So I'm going to make where that, I want a big flag. I'm going to put a crest, some sort of crest. So I'm just going to extend my flag space. two vertical lines. I'm going to get rid of this stuff right here. I'm going to have a flag hanging down. And I'm going to uh, make this a square because this is where I want the flag and I'm going to have a point to my flag. So here I'm just going to extend this line here. Unless I have to draw. So there's the X part. Now this is just kind of like when we did the roof. We want I want my flag to have a little point to it. So I gotta find the middle part so I can make the point to my flag. So X marks the spot, that will be the middle. There's the middle of my flag. Line that ruler up. And I want my point to be maybe right about here. Left hand side of the dot towards the, I'm sorry, right hand side of the dot towards the right hand corner. Didn't like that. Get 
get rid of all that extra stuff. I'm going to put a cross on mine. So for that horizontal line, I'll have to use that left hand vanishing point. You could do whatever you wanted on yours. I'm just going to have a little cross, a thicker cross. Again, you don't have to have a flag. This is just a cool feature. I don't like that at all. Ruler is difficult. It's both handy because it has that little hump on it. That's why I like to be able to pick it up a lot better. So I just don't like. Notice as the bottom of this, I'm using that vanishing point. There. Okay. We've got the majority of our castle drawn. We would just be at this point working on the exterior. Again, I am not going to be adding all of this around this. This is an um, example. If I were to spend the rest of this video putting on all of the stone, we will be here for an extra hour or so. That's not needed, not necessary. So what we're gonna do next for our drawing is add our moat. Going to be using those vanishing points. The moat needs to go around the castle. You can have it come out of this area, um, and that's that's what I'm going to do with mine. Sometimes you can use the vanishing points, and in the past I have used the vanishing points. I've had it come out of the vanishing points. Um, I just I prefer it to kind of come around the castle. So somewhere in this space, it needs to be below that horizon line. Somewhere on that castle, you're going to have a, a top line come out. So this is the, the back end of our moat and our line is going to be kind of wiggly. It can come out as far as you'd like it to. This is the space our moat, our castle goes around or goes around our castle, I'm sorry. It needs to though, however, this line that we're creating needs to Stop on that drawbridge. It needs to stop in this space somewhere on that drawbridge closer to the um, gatehouse. Don't put it over here. Okay. The drawbridge is the part that goes over top of the moat. So it needs to come somewhere on the drawbridge closer to that gatehouse. It can come right here if you like it, right at the corner where that gatehouse meets. But it has to come somewhere between this space. Skipping over our bridge over our bridge kind of in the same spot and just extending that line again you can go all the way to the vanishing point if you like for mine i'm just going to have it come back towards the castle and i'm going to fix this space here i think it's just a little bit too rounded Now, to draw the back part of this moat, same spot, it can come out right where that same spot is, but instead we're going to extend it around, and for mine, I'm going to go off the page. I'm going to come back around right up here to the front. So it's like I've gone around the corner. 
I want this to be kind of closer to my, my exterior part. I want a really big moat for mine. You can have it come closer up here. I just like the way that this looks. Back towards that drawbridge. Now this line has to end at least at the very end of the drawbridge. It can't be over here or else our drawbridge is leading you into the moat. So it has to either end right there or somewhere else along that drawbridged area. That's exactly where mine's going in, right at the end. Skipping over that drawbridge, same spot. Going to continue on. Now, with mine, we come out here and then back towards this. Now, I'm just going to have it continue on with that line so it's like we can't see it anymore. Or you can go above it. Or you can go all the way to the, the uh, vanishing point. So down here, this is where the water is. What we're going to do is where these spaces are, I'm just going to draw a few spots where we have lines coming down. I like to do it just ever so often down here, making some little vertical lines down. I wouldn't draw it here. And I'm going to connect this space. This is the moated area. So I want to kind of follow that same shape. It doesn't have to be the exact shape. But see how this kind of curves in just like that previous? This kind of bows out. So between this space and here, I'm going to bow out a little bit. Now I want to be able to see some water in here. If you didn't, if you wanted your moat to go all the way down, we can't see that water, you can just extend those lines and then we wouldn't even have to draw this inner part. But because I would like to see some water down in the moat, I'm going to draw mine like this. So from here to here, we kind of go, it's kind of bowed out and then it curves in. Here we kind of curve in, go out, just, now look here, here's our drawbridge. I'm going to draw all the way to that, skipping over the other side. And now look, my cliff side here is covering that up. I can't see the water anymore. Okay, so we've got that for mine. Back here in the back, this is the opposite side of our moat. Just gonna draw. We can't see this. This is the cliff side. This is closest to us. Coming over here, I could probably draw one down here. So right now, this space in right here is my water. In between here, here is the ground. Okay. You can shade this in if you want to. It's a lot of shading, but you can shade that in to show that it's it is the ground. You can put, if this is water and you want to put some lines in here that's water, I like to put a little alligator in the water. Uh, that's why I like to make a little space here. And I actually could widen this a little bit more just so I have a little bit more space for my, for my alligator. He's one of my favorite parts. I'm going to zoom in here. So I want him to be in the water. So I'm going to kind of, this is the curve, this is his body, his curve of his body. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put his nose in the water. So I'm going to make the little indentions, the top part of his nose, just two little like this. Again, he's in the water. So there, I'm going to zoom in some more. So there's the front part of his nose. So going back around, he's going to have, and I want his eyes to stick out. So here's his snout. And now his eyes are going to come out of the water. So there's the bottom part. I'm going to make two little bumps. For my alligator, there's his eyes. You could put some little lines in there. And then around the back part, and I would like his, 
this is the back part so he's mostly submerged just what i like about drawing him is he's he's a little bit easier so we're going to put his little tail up he's got his little tail in the water and we don't really need to draw the rest of his body so we want to show that he is in the water so we're going to kind of put a few uh lines around just to kind of show that he's in the water and we're going to put some ripples to show that this is water you could if you wanted to do light reflections you can put some rocks water going around the sides of those rocks but you want those streams to go the same direction around the moat so you're going to be adding in again i forgot to zoom out i'm just i'm awful today with this video so here's my little boulder my little rock that i created give it some value around it give it a little bit of shading you can add some more shading to these kind of thicken those lines those ripples you'll notice on the alligator though i kind of went horizontally And you'll be adding a lot more features to this. I'm going to show a few more little things that you can put on, on your drawings. Um, I like to do a, a forest scene. Again, I like to give you guys a nice repertoire of ideas so that whenever you're working on your actual project, you have some ideas. Uh, so I changed the scenery. I'm going to zoom in. I'm, on this horizon line, I'm going to make a forest. So all you have to do is make a lot of... Um, little vertical lines, little tick marks, different sizes, some taller, some shorter, pretty close together because our forest is in the distance. Don't make them too tall. No? So all those little vertical lines. Then we're going to make our trees. Now this is where we're just going to make little tiny um, curly cute lines so just all I'm going to do I, I guess they're clouds I'm just going right above that line and I'm moving my pencil I'm going to like this in circles I'm working that line going up and down and it's a solid line these trees are kind of far away so some of them are taller going back down some of them are shorter this is our tree line. You can do zigzaggy lines or, you know, they don't have to be little circles. I just find it easier to do circles. And there's our forest in the background. There's our trees in the background. You can add mountains. I really like to do the mountains back here. Remember, they're not super tall, but we could say that they're closer. They're much closer. Um, but they're not super, super tall. You don't want those gargantuous mounds. This isn't, um, you know, those are fine for some things, but not for when we're working with perspective. Just making some squiggly lines for my mountains. I'm going to slide this over to show the other side. I'm going to make an additional forest. You don't have to do this. making those little squiggles going up and down some of them taller than others
have some fun with this. You know, put Harry Potter in it or put put Dumbledore or put you know, if you have any anything that you're you really enjoy, have fun with, with these drawings. Add some details in there. You could have have a knight if you wanted to or something in the foreground. I will say this, when you are I'm gonna put my mountains in right now while I'm talking. Um while you are, you know, if if you're not the best at it, put the the if you want to put a horse or something in your drawings, um, put them closer to the foreground. So put them closer to the viewer. Remember, the foreground is the front of your composition. So you can place those kinds of things in in the foreground. If you wanted a knight, or if you wanted, um, um, you know, a, a horse, put them in a, and make them parallel to the viewer. So make them going this way. If you have to put them in perspective, it makes it a little bit more difficult. Again, you don't want, unless your knight is really, really close to the um, foreground, to the, to the viewer, to the exterior part of your drawing, you can have a large knight. But if he's going to be over here, he needs to be able to get into your castle, okay? So you don't want to draw a, a massive knight on here uh, if you're wanting him to get into the castle. You could put like Excalibur, or you can put uh, swords, or whatever. You can, you can also add some other little flags. So I'm going to add one little flag up here in the background. Little flag. Here's the flag pole. Wiggle away from the flag pole. Let me zoom in because it's pretty far. So I made my flag pole and I made like a little wiggle away from the flag pole. And just kind of making a triangle in that space. And we can add those. And I want mine, again, to be the same height, so I'm going to use that right-hand vanishing point for my other tower. I know that I don't want it any taller than that. Here's the top of that pole. Here's my... Make those flags going in the same direction. Don't put one going in the opposite direction. The wind's not blowing two different ways on the castle. You could have some fun with this this drawing, put some fun things in there. Don't forget about adding in clouds or, or atmosphere in this, um, this drawing. So I'm just going to put my clouds. Remember, they're, they're bigger as they are towards the top of the page, smaller when they get away from you. Show that atmospheric um, I forgot the word I was going to say. Give us some depth on, up in the sky, too. Put birds up there if you want to. Have some fun with this. So I'm just going to kind of make a, a dirt road for some kind of a path. So I'm using that space. I would if you want to put some texture in your ground, you can, you know, just a little bit, little patches of grass. Things like that in your in your ground. All right, and there it is. There is our two point perspective castle. So remember, you need to have the castle uh, with either brick or stone exterior and a gatehouse. Uh, you will have battlements throughout the entire exterior of the castle. Uh, towers, at least two towers on your castle, at least two windows on your castle. Remember, you don't want windows down here because somebody's going to get into your castle. Uh, a, a porticullis, you can either have it open, that's that iron gate right here, or closed all the way down. Um, you need to have a drawbridge. Remember that drawbridge needs to be larger or at least the same size as, as your porticullis. 
and it needs to be wooden so it can have um, horizontal or vertical slats in it and it needs to have chains drawn open. You need to have a moat going around your castle or your fort and then background details. Add in some details. You can put flags in there. You could put, this is uh, Rapunzel, you could put her hair going down or um, a, a knight, a dragon in the sky, um, whatever you would, would like to add to your drawing. Anyway, thank you for watching.